Hey there, my name is Curtis Lucas and you're watching Empire Building. Well, for those of you who missed it, this is what I said in my very last video. Right now, they assume a merge date of March 30th. Honestly, I do not think it's going to take that long. By March 30th, the block time as a result of the difficulty bomb will be egregiously high. So if it takes that long, we really have only um, two options. Either delay the difficulty bomb again or convert to proof of stake earlier. I'm of the opinion that we will convert to proof of stake um, significantly before this date, no later than the end of January, if uh, we don't want to delay that difficulty bomb yet again. Son of a bitch! Well, yeah, that was uh, disappointing uh, to see nonetheless, but I had to have a closer look at this so I could understand exactly what was going on here. Because as with most things, it's never quite what it seems on the surface. And as I've mentioned many times, I'm watching the progression to this merge with much anticipation and I'm paying attention to it in great detail. So if you'd also like to keep up to date and understand what the implications as of new developments are as they get announced, then subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. It'll support the channel and help get this video out to more people. So as it turns out, this uh, EIP 4345 was actually created on October 5th, just two days before I recorded that video, unbeknownst to me. But again, right off the top, they're already saying that this EIP is not recommended for general use or implementation as it is likely to change. There's not a whole lot of information in here that we can uh, really use to understand this any further, except that the motivation here says targeting the Shanghai upgrade and or the merge to occur before May 2022. Either the bomb can be readjusted at that time or removed altogether. I've, th this sentence here is included in every EIP that uh, delays a difficulty bomb. It doesn't actually mean anything. Um, they're never going to remove this difficulty bomb. It's too important to make sure that as we finally do merge, that uh, the chain doesn't get left behind uh, for miners that will continue to operate, to run on it. They want to make absolutely sure that the chain as it exists today will cease to function. So why is this happening? Why are they doing this? To get a little bit more uh, perspective, we can actually go into the discussions here this gentleman is asking uh, some very good questions. Uh, for starters, as the merge is getting ready, why not merging and canceling the Ice Age altogether? Tim responds saying, ideally, we never reach this difficulty bomb because we've merged before. But if we haven't, I think it's better to have to push it back again. The alternatives are one, remove the bomb altogether, which I don't think we should do, makes it easier for the proof of work chain to keep going, also to launch scam forks, or two, push the bomb way back, which is sort of equivalent to removing it in this context. The difficulty bomb was introduced uh, as a means to strongly incentivize the Ethereum community to switch to proof of stake. The difficulty bomb schedules a network slowdown when the deadline is missed. The network suffered from previous bombs. The block time went up by 30 seconds before EIP 649 came to the rescue. Block time went from up to 20 seconds before EIP 1234 saved the day. Block time went up 17 seconds before EIP 2387 cut the right wire. And block time wasn't impacted the fourth time as EIP 3554 pushed back the bomb before it even started ticking. Looking at this chart, you can see the bombs they're referring to. These are a measure of the block times. And each time we approached or passed a difficulty bomb, uh, those block times began to increase exponentially. And this is what we would witness uh, if 
the difficulty bomb goes off prior to the merge being ready. And back at this time, it really wasn't that big of a deal because uh, there wasn't a whole lot of network congestion. Ethereum wasn't fully utilized the way it is right now. So part of the argument here is if there's a chance they're not going to be ready, then it's best to push this thing back before it becomes a problem. Then just cross our fingers and hope everything works out. The fourth time it was pushed back was somewhere in this region here. Um, actually, I believe it was just before the before the new year back in 2020 um, when that uh, difficulty bomb was pushed back. I can't recall exactly when it was supposed to go off, Point is, it never got there. So this would be the fifth time they're thinking about pushing this thing back. But as they mentioned, they're not entirely sure when exactly or what date they would push this back to. It seems to be up for debate. This EIP is proposing to defuse and delay the bomb for the fifth time. I assume no one would argue that the four previous interventions were not justified. The readiness of the switch to proof of stake was miles away from what it is today. I assume that with the state of the network today, having even a 0.1 second more delay between blocks would greatly impact the user experience. Transaction, transaction fees likely going through the roof. Nevertheless, I am concerned that removing altogether or delaying the bomb again would harm the credibility of the merge. If the merge is close to ready, if we start to tease on social media that tests of the merge from clients is going well, let's just not delay and do the merge. So I think as many of us would agree, we feel like our time has come. This has taken long enough. How much more time do you really need? And as an engineer, again, speaking as uh, someone who understands um, the consequences of uh, prematurely moving forward. Sometimes it could lead to more problems than it's worth. And given the amount of money that's at stake here, no pun intended, it's probably not a bad thing to take this carefully. But let's see what he has to say in response to this. I think this is the crux of things. Even though the merge testing is going well, it isn't going to happen until the difficulty bomb is due to go off again, early December as per EIP 3554. We are not one month away from having client releases ready for the merge. So we need to push the bomb back again. I used this value as a rough proxy of when I think we could ship the merge if everything goes relatively well. If things didn't go well, we'd have to push the bomb back again. Obviously, the EIP is still a draft and a specific time will need to be discussed further. So yeah, it looks like odds are the difficulty bomb will be delayed. They just don't know how far out quite yet. And you can see after seeing this, I figured I'd throw my two cents into the conversation uh, and ask further, for further clarity on this because I went in and had a little bit more look at um, some of the resources and information that had been put out by uh, Tim Biko. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his last name correctly there. You can actually have a look at his GitHub profile, which also links to his Twitter. So I began to um, sort of creep on the guy and see what kind of information or breadcrumbs he might have been leaving behind. He's quite active on Twitter with uh, quite a number of followers. Um, and he, he has a pinned tweet here with some very useful information. There's a great uh, sort of post here that kind of breaks down the progress of how things changed with the roadmap of proof of work to proof of stake uh, getting to the merge um, from Ethereum's history. Very interesting read. But getting uh, into the crux of this issue with this current uh, delay, I found some information regarding the actual transition. And this paragraph here was quite enlightening. The transition from proof of work to proof of stake, a terminal total difficulty will be set in the clients. Once a block is seen exceeding that difficulty on the proof of work chain, clients will enter a transition mode where they will begin listening to the proof of stake layer for consensus. As soon as the consensus layer has finalized a block whose difficulty exceeds the terminal total difficulty, the execution layer will stop listening for and gossiping proof of work blocks entirely. And then voila, the merge is done. 
So the way that I interpret this is that when they feel we're ready to actually engage and, and begin the merge, they'll set a this terminal total difficulty uh, at a specific level that the clients will begin listening for. And once that difficulty level is reached, then all of the clients and all of the nodes know to switch and stop listening to the proof of work chain and begin listening only to the proof of stake chain. This makes sure that all nodes and all clients institute that shift at exactly the same time. But for additional clarity, that's why I went back to ask. What I said was, my question was, would it be correct to assume that there is no chance the merge occurs prior to the difficulty bomb going off? Information seems to suggest that the transition will be dictated by a selected terminal total difficulty. I assume that difficulty target will be set in such a way that it would occur post bomb, but before block times get too high, question mark. Because what's not clear to me here is that it seems conceivable that just because they're moving the difficulty bomb all the way to May doesn't mean they can't begin the merge prior to that if they're ready. They don't actually need to wait for the bomb to go off necessarily. The bomb's only there to make sure that the chain will eventually die on its own. So what this means is it's still conceivably possible that we could start the merge in say January, just like we were thinking or at least just like I was thinking. So we'll see if we get any answer or response to this, but I'm going to try to uh, be a little more persistent and see if I can't uh, get in contact with some of these developers directly. So that's the update. We'll have to keep a close eye on this. It's not something that's being widely talked about. It certainly doesn't appear to have moved the price any. Another reason why it's probably good that they did this now but also it's important to note again that that's only a draft until uh, anything actually gets confirmed, then it's not really news, it's still a rumor. If you have any other specific questions about this issue, then feel free to leave them down in the comments. I do read those regularly. Part of my goal with this channel is to help educate people. And to be honest, I'm still learning a lot of this myself. Nevertheless, this is still very exciting. I mean, Yes, it's disappointing when we experience delays like this, but it's more akin to say, um, like Elon Musk, he went on years and years and years, constantly with delays with Tesla and SpaceX, usually promising overly ambitious targets. He never quite meets them when he says he's going to meet them, but he does meet them. He puts out aggressive numbers. He tries to meet those numbers. Sometimes he misses those numbers. What would you but rather- often he misses the numbers. But that's okay because in the course of the year or in the course of the five years, if you take a five year step back and say, what has he promised in 2014 to what is he doing in 2019, you'd be ecstatic. So I do think it's important to remember that what Ethereum is attempting to accomplish here has never been done before, never on this scale. So it's very important that we get it right the first time. Thanks for watching. Remember to leave a like. And I'll see you in the next one. That's all for this one. Now let's get back to empire building.